What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we're going to take another look at Glassnode Insights, the weekly uh, update from Glassnode, the newsletter. Uh, I said I'd be getting into this more often. I think it's a great way to any of you who don't want to sit here and read. We together can go through this and discover more about this on-chain uh, data analysis. Okay, before we get any further, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you for all the uh, the people throughout the years who've been supporting me. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure if you're still here or not, but either way, much love. Uh, please leave a comment down below if you feel so. Uh, whatever you got to say all right my one request is that you please be civil in your discourse it's so easy edit your response with some kindness and compassion these two things are absolutely free and we can make the world a better place if we use them thank you and uh, at least for thank you for the consideration also too, uh, share this with a friend uh, follow me over on library you know, eventually someday, you know, we'll probably all be running away from YouTube and library might be the thing that is uh, keeping things going with actual, like, actually not like censoring stuff. Fortunately, I never fe felt like I've been censored here on YouTube, but anyway, come check out library. It's a great place. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Also, while you're down below, you know, turn that uh, post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Fantastic. Let's get into it. It is Monday afternoon where I'm at and uh, this just came out today on Monday. This time I'm not doing it later in the week. I want to stay on top of this now. So uh, call me out if I get behind. Thank you. So the great hash power migration is underway as an estimated 50% of Bitcoin miners are offline and on the move. We assess the magnitude of this event observed in the on-chain data. So this is week 27 of 2021. So the Bitcoin market has traded slightly higher this week, albeit still within a trading range established by uh, since mid-May. Price traded between the weekly high of 36,460 and a low of 32,775. As, as vo volatility, excuse me, declines whilst price consolidates. As volatility seeps out of the Bitcoin price, it has notably ramped up in the mining industry. As the Bitcoin network adjusts to an incredible decline in hash power during the Great Migration, this week the protocol experienced the largest difficulty adjustment in history, adjusting down 27.94%, so only almost 28%. The resilience of the Bitcoin protocol is remarkable. This week, blocks continue to be mined, transaction continue to be settled, all while 50% of uh, approximately 50% its industrial base relocates and reallocates capital to new jurisdictions. This week, we'll focus on a number of on-chain mining metrics that help characterize and gauge the magnitude of this incredible shift that is underway. Here we see in this time period from here to here of the trading range, as it did, like I said, consolidated, went swinging up, swinging down, and consolidated within this little part to finish out the week. Sizing up the mining shift. This week we saw plenty of volatility coming into the mining network, uh, mining metric, sorry. As the impact of mining ban on China reaches full swing, when a significant portion of hash power comes offline, blocks will be mined at a slower pace until the difficulty adjusts downwards. This realigns the complexity of the mining puzzle to the average hash power observed over the, la over the 2,600 uh, difficulty window, which is 14 days. This week, the average block interval on a 24-hour average basis spiked to a short-term high of 1,958 seconds, which is 32.6 minutes, over 226% longer than the 6,000 or sorry, 600s of seconds target block time. This event was only temporary uh, on June 28th with average block time since recovering to an average between the 8s and 9s, 800s and 900s in seconds. So this is an average, okay, we're looking at the mean block interval. So how what the average block interval is. So we can see right here at this point at the very end before the difficulty adjustment, how slow it was. If we zoom out, we can see that this was the slowest average block time since 2009 cypherpunk era where Bitcoin did not even have a market price. 
The previous longest average block time of 1,774.5 seconds occurred at the bottom of the final pullback before the 2017 blow off top. As you can see right here, I think. Where are we looking? Uh, Oh, maybe we're going to go down here. There we go. Aha. This was too short of a time period. Okay. Sorry. Just referring to this, that last bit I read. All right. So you can see that spike versus this spike versus anything in 2009. To estimate the magnitude of the hash power shift underway, we can consider the change in estimated hash rates since the stable peak observed in April to early May of 2021. Note that hash rate is estimated as a derivative of block time and difficulty. And here we have used a 24 hour moving average to smooth out some of the natural variability. Hash rate on the network has typically around 180 at a hash at, at the peak and fell off to a local low of 65 at a hash aligned with the 1958 second average block time on June 28th. You can see this right here. Hash rate has since recovered and stabilized around the 88 to 110 at a hash range, reflecting an overall decline of 38 to 49% of hash power. This provides a gauge on the proportion of the network that is currently offline and affected by the ban in China. <coughs> Now that the protocol difficulty has adjusted down, we can see the difficulty ribbon has inverted to the deepest extent since the 2018 bear market capitulation. A difficulty ribbon inversion is an extremely uncommon event where the faster moving averages of difficulty, the 9 day, the 14 day, etc. fall below the longer term moving average such as the 128 day and the 200 day. A difficulty ribbon inversion typically, represent, typically represents a minor capitulation event usually observed at the end of a bear market or, uh, or after having events when the minor in incomes are squeezed and profitability takes a hit. It is a result of miners switching off the machines that are costing more than they are making and has historically correlated with strong bullish market reversals. So let's take a look at this here. So the 2018, uh, you can see how this is a, a ribbon here, how it's kind of like a rainbow and what they're talking about here is the flip where the top blue one drops below the bottom red one. So now the blue's on the bottom, the red's more on top for a period of time before it starts to switch and the run continues on. Here it had a little test at the, uh, the halving event in 2020, a little drop down, pop back up, you know, but nothing has had a full ribbon twist like this one until now. <clears throat> Minor revenues get a boost. While difficulty ribbon inversions are historically bullish events, in this instance, the huge logis logistical costs incurred by Chinese miners may necessitate spending of accumulated BTC treasuries, creating some sell pressure. However, it is important to note that there is somewhat of a counterbalance in the uplift of, in revenues for the remaining miners that are still operational. When Bitcoin was trading in the 50,000 to 60,000 range in April, hash rate was at its peak and the aggregate mining industry saw incomes of 50 million to 60 million per day. While prices since have declined by around 50%, the miners who remain operational have just seen an estimated 38 to 49% of their competition switch off in the short term. The daily aggregate re uh, revenue now around 25 million to 30 million per day, but is shared amongst a smaller pool of miners. Some daily BTC issuance, fewer competitors, or same daily BTC issuance with fewer competitors to share the spoils. Pretty nice for those guys, right? <clears throat> this implies that following the latest difficulty adjustment, operational miners are incurring the same OPEX expense, but are seeing profitability rise almost 2x, approaching similar profitability levels back in April. See this per day, per day, per day, per day. The minor outflow multiple tracks the rate of minor spending uh, relative to their yearly average. From this, we can see miners have dramatically slowed their spending of late, even amidst the Great Migration. Historically, we have seen the following cyclical patterns in miner spending behavior: hodling in a bear market's green. So that's probably going to be down here. 
all right so i'm going to refer back to this graph here in a minute where miners reach a stable steady distribution pattern that flat outflow multiple an increased distribution in, in bull markets red right there okay one two and three as miners take advantage of bull market strength and sell at an accelerating pace, the rising outflow multiple. Now you have the declining distribution after market tops, which are in blue. Going down here, down here, and down here. As miners slow down their spending, uh, perhaps due to increasing conviction or a desire to limit excessive, uh, limit excessive, does it? Okay, little typo okay limit the excessive sell pressure declining okay so it's a declining outflow multiple uh, multiple impressively even during the great migration we are yet to see a significant increase to minor spending behavior the speed of hash rate recovery uh, will provide further insight as to this a quick hash rate recovery indicates Chinese miners have successfully relocated liquidated hardware or otherwise rec uh, recovered costs reducing the risk of Treasury BTC sales a slow prolonged hash rate recovery indicates the inverse and increase the odds that costs are being carried, debts are accumulating, and thus creating a higher probability for minor BTC sales, okay? In fact, since early 2020, the macro spending behavior of miners has changed dramatically. For almost all of uh, Bitcoin's trading history, miners have consistently spent more coins then they accumulated such that unspent daily was in a structural downtrend. This means that miners historically spent more coins than they accumulated. The chart shows, so how is that possible? Anyway, let's keep reading. The chart below shows the unspent miner supply, coin-based transactions that have never moved, uh, plotted against a 365-day moving average from mid-2020. The structural downtrend in miner distribution appears to not have uh, to have not only flattened out but reversed. The unspent BTC in coin-based outputs is now above its yearly average. This suggests that miners have begun accumulating in a way the market has not seen to date. Given the timing of this event, there's likely a number of factors to consider behind this. The macro monetary landscape supporting the case for Bitcoin became globally apparent in 2020, increasing minor conviction. Miners have access to vastly superior financing options such as coin collateralized debt and liquid options and futures markets to hedge their risk. And then you have reduced ASIC miner production due to constraints on global chip fabrication capacity. As, prices, as price rises, existing hash power becomes increasingly profitable as little new competition can come to the market. As prices rallied in the bull market, BTC mining is likely to have been and still be particularly lucrative through this having epic. Now, just as a side note, I remember prior to having, there were quite a few uh, pieces of data. And if you go back to some old videos, I seem to remember it was somewhere between that the, like the mid range, like uh, miners, that they would start to get pushed out if the price fell below like 85 to 9, 8,500, 9,000. So at these prices, pretty much everybody is profitable still. It just does take a lot to get uh, set up and started in trying to uh, grab some of the network. So let's make heads or tails of this, okay? This is the unspent supply. Yeah, so it's like flattening out here where usually it's just sort of uh, dropping. Interesting. I'm going to have to wrap my head around that one more. Scarcer than gold. Many analysts have pointed out this week that uh, the Puel multiple, an indicator for minor profitability, also dropped into the undervalued zone. The Puel multiple is calculated by taking the ratio between daily aggregate USD minor revenue and its 365 day moving average. A high Puel multiples indicate strong profitability and thus high incentives for miners to sell, thus increasing liquid coin supply on the market. A low Puel multiples indicate poor profitability, miner capitulation, and the gaining in share of hash power by stronger miners eventually leading to a supply squeeze. 
Now, what I think when they say minor capitulation here, I think this means shutting off, not selling, because up here, it's talking about incentives to sell because the price is better. Like the difficulty ribbon inversion, this is a rare event. Having happened only five times in history, usually during generational market capitulation events. Note that Powell has a multiple, has a revised glass note Academy entry with detailed explanation of both the metric, but also the mining market mechanism mechanics as it describes. Very interesting. So we can see here's the 2011 capitulation. And it's not quite, not quite in here yet. Not the same, at least. Seems to be like bouncing off like a kind of a piece of, uh, it's like resisting right there. Interesting, but time is not up. We'll keep watching. However, as is the case for many metrics, who doesn't love a little bit of a nuance? Uh, the principal reason the Powell multiple dropped like a stone and then promptly reversed is actually a technical one. Okay, bing. so it's hard to see it, but you see that tiny little reversal right in there. Bing. So it's like up to here again. So block time slowed down by 226% on June 28th. This means only 58 of the targeted 144 blocks were mined that day. As a result, only 40% of the expected BTC was issued that day, making aggregate minor revenues fall by 60%. The difficulty adjustment has since corrected this. In fact, the issuance rate of Bitcoin fell to an all-time low of 0.71%, making for a stock-to-flow ratio of 140. Bitcoin was technically 2.37x scarcer than gold. So the, the S2F stock to flow of 59, if just for one day. Let's see. Okay, so this is further stuff. You can come and check out their dashboard and watch other stuff. Feel free to check out uh, Glassnode. You can sign up for this for free. Um, this is all really interesting. I really think it's wise for us uh, to take time to get to know these metrics. Um, I know they may not may not make sense overnight, but uh, if we keep looking at this week by week, our, we'll get to know it more and more and we'll start to understand the flow of it and how it affects the markets, if even just a little bit. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you all. Take care. Peace.